So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa usalli ala Rasulil Kareem. So, I want. I have a dream. You know, the dream is to create people who are. There's no such thing as an expert in Quran. You can only be a student of Quran. Quran is like the vast river, unending river. And in this unending river, I wish to create people that are able to take a few drops in their life to give them the tools to dive deep into the Quran and bring out the jewels and then show them to the people. And so in this regard, you know, it's very, very important that Muslims learn the Quran because Quran is everything, especially now for us, right? And uh, we need a revival of the Arabic language, but we also need people to have true Iman who really listen to Allah. What is Allah saying? Who experience what Allah is saying for, with the with cognition, with understanding what is being said, and see the effect that has on their hearts. And so, Sutul Yasin uh, has many names, but one of them, of course, is that it is the qalb of the Quran. It is the heart of the Quran. And even though the hadith is weak, and even if the Prophet had not said that, one would come to the same conclusion. But that is a different uh, discussion. That is that most surahs in Quran have pairs. So the Yasin actually doesn't have a, like a pair. Like you have two eyes, two ears. The heart has no pair. And so the Yasin is unique in the entire Quran as a surah. And its positioning is unique. But uh, moving forward, uh, in this surah al Yasin, a lot of things will be discussed that have to do with end times, that have to do with Iman, that have to do with the Quranic worldview. And so it's really, I think, going to be an amazing class. And of course, this is one of those surahs that we're going to need in the end of times. Because the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever reads the Yasin uh, in the beginning of his days, his needs are completed. And we're going to need all the help we get can get as, as, as the situation of the world uh, gets more dire. So I'm planning to have this Arabic class. You can get the information about this Arabic class by looking at the comment section in there. I have the different links. And so, you know, the, the course is going to be uh, a full course. You'll be able to log into the classroom. You'll be able to look at the classes. You'll be able to look at all the information. I'll be sending out quizzes uh, almost every day or every other day. Uh, everyone will be part of a, a group, uh, either on WhatsApp or Telegram, and we'll be discussing and talking Arabic. It's a three-month course. The timings are going to be on Mondays and Wednesdays from 1 to 2.30, and Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 10.30 New York time. So all times are New York time, because that's where I am. And so New York time... Uh, and uh, in addition to that, the other course that I think is extremely important is the Rukia course. And I'm going to be doing that. I've not advertised that, but I'm letting people know. Inshallah, I'll be starting that after I start the Arabic class. I will immediately, right after that, I will start uh, promoting the Rukia class, which will also be on Mondays, oh, sorry, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to two, uh, 2.30. But uh, so there's all that information, inshallah, in the comment section. Uh, where you can join the class, get to know like-minded people who are getting ready to do their hijrah, who are getting ready with themselves as far as fatwa is concerned, uh, people who are getting ready to um, to deal with the, the, the situation Muslims are facing themselves in. And so this, you know, a lot of good things came out of our last class that we had on Sutul Kahf. And so, inshallah ta'ala, I hope uh, even more, inshallah, barakah comes out of the class this time, but there's no better feeling than being in Ramadan in the Tarawih prayer and listening to the whole Quran and understanding what Allah is saying. There's no better feeling than that. It is the best feeling in the world to know what Allah is saying in Salah. And it really, you know, people listen to the music of Quran, so to say, the rhythm of Quran and get captivated. But imagine it's not only captivating uh, in terms of its rhythm, but it's also captivating in terms of what it's saying, right? You'll When you learn the Arabic language, you'll listen to a verse and you'll start thinking about it. 
right? You'll get lost in your thoughts and the imam has already gone forward. And then when you come back, you're like, and then something else hits you and then takes you on, on a mental journey, so to say. And so anyway, the point is that, inshallah, it'll be an amazing class. I wish every Muslim can join this class and become part of it. Again, it's on Mondays and Wednesdays from 1 to 2.30 New York time. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 10.30 uh, New York time. And so if you don't have the funds, that's okay. If you have the funds, give the funds. Because that's how it should be. If you don't have funds and you're committed, alhamdulillah. If you do have the funds, then Allah has given you the, the ability to invest in it so that your heart is in it. Okay? And so that your commitment is in it. And inshallah ta'ala, um, you know, uh, I said this last time and I kind of didn't do it. But inshallah this time I'm definitely going to do it. Those people who finish the course uh, properly, uh, I'm going to give them a certificate. And in terms of Arabic language, we'll be concentrating on uh, sarf specifically. Uh, because the last class I concentrated on nahav, which is the sentence structure. You know, the fa'il and maf'ul and muqtada and khabar and so on and so forth. But this class, I'll be taking the grammar of the world, the grammar of the word, and how to do sarf with it. Like, how do you get from ilm to alim to ma'loom to alim to mu'allim, right? To alama, like this. Okay, so how do you take one word and then, and Sultan Yasin has some awesome tafsir behind it that is very life-changing. And so I really hope, inshallah ta'ala, you all take this course and for Rukia, we need more people who understand the basics of Rukia, how to do Rukia, because, you know, that, well, when I, when I talk about the course, inshallah ta'ala, I'll talk more, but there's a great need in the Muslim community that, you know, if somebody's reading Quran, then somebody else can come and read Quran and they know exactly what verses to read, how to deal with Rukia. You know, it, it, when one imam goes, for example, if I go somewhere and I'm reading Quran on someone, there's only so much I can do. And this is one of the reasons that we're failing to break these this magic. We need more people. We need people. We need 10 people in every every city. 10 people in every city who know how to do Ruqya. And so we'll, talking, we'll talk about the methods of uh, Bin Halima. Uh, we'll be talking about the methods of other scholars. We'll be talking about some things and observations that I've come to when it comes to Ruqya. And I'll be giving you the verses of the Quran and the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ when it comes to breaking ruqya, understanding magic, understanding ayn, understanding the jinn world. So that will also be a three-month course. And I'm hoping, inshallah, in that course, uh, you will be able to actually do some practical things with the world of ruqya, with the world of the jinns, and with the world of magic. And so that's as far as that's concerned. But for now... Uh, more important than that because your ruqya will be 10 times stronger if you understand the language and it'll be easier for you to put ayat together uh, and have, make it powerful if you understand the Arabic language so for example if the jinn is Christian and you bring the verses of Quran regarding Christianity and read it on that jinn it will be very effective on that jinn okay? if the jinn is a pagan, a Hindu a worships idols then you bring those verses together and read it on the jinn will be very effective on him. Like this, there are many, many issues. But uh, the point is that uh, it all starts with Arabic language. Arabic language is key. Okay, And so uh, if you can learn the Arabic language uh, and then I'm offering a course, there are other people who have much better courses than I do, but I want to play my part in it. I think I offer some unique things in it, inshallah when it comes to the Arabic language. And so, please do take this course and share it with friends because if you didn't learn Arabic but another friend of yours did and for all his life he understands the Quran or she understands the Quran for their entire life, you'll get the reward of that. And so, share this video with your friends and family members. So, let me just share with you. So, inshallah, if you click on the link I give you, you can uh, go to the Yasin class, enroll for free. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, make the payment, inshallah ta'ala. I'll put out the flyer for the, for the payment also. 
you know, if you, uh, if you go here, you can make the payment if you have the funds. If you don't have the funds, then all you have to do is, if you can't afford it, no worries, email me at obloach2030 at protonmail.com. Just let me know so I can enroll you in the class. And, uh, and then when you enroll in the class and I send you the link for enrolling in the class, it's very, very basic. Okay. And you just go here and you click on enroll for free or you can click on, uh, you know, uh, sign up. You'll see that, uh, you know, and then you just sign up for the class. And when you go to the class, you'll see the basic material that we're using. Qasun and uh Yasin is between Juz 22 and 23, so both Juz are there. And you can look at the translation and so on and so forth. Some basic tafsir is there. You can and you can look at the uh, Bismillah welcome introduction video. And uh, so that is inshallah ta'ala it. Uh you know there are five obligations Muslims owe to the Quran. Five obligations. Number one, to believe in Quran. And so if you start learning Quran, that happens. Number two, to read Quran, right? To get used to reading Quran. And uh, number three, to act upon Quran. Number four, to understand Quran. Number five, to spread Quran. That's the best career a person can have is to teach Quran. Learn Quran, teach Quran. Learn Quran, teach Quran. And this is something every Muslim can do. This is not a requirement to be an alim. This is a requirement of just understanding what Allah is saying. And then um, the insights that will come to you, the pearls and the things, the gems that come to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just because of your attachment to Qur'an, you can't even imagine. The way it will affect your dreams, you can't imagine, right? But you've got to get to a point where, you know, if you're, if you're studying every day for, you know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, I'll be sending out quizzes every day, new words. And I'll be focusing on, you know, words and talking about words. And you'll see that, inshallah ta'ala. And, and then by repetition. And those people that took my Sutul class know this, that I have a tendency to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat until people get it, right? And so um, we're going to be looking at the words. We're going to be looking at the tafsir of Sutul Yasin. And we're going to try to, like, really hammer the Quran into us, hammer Sutul Yasin into us. You know, and until it like it feels like it's become part of our thinking, until it becomes part of our bones and our thinking, and so that's what needs to be done. And so I need some young brothers and sisters who commit themselves to the Quran, to the study of the Quran, to understanding the Quran, to spending their time and their life with teaching Quran. This is the need of the time. And you know, in Sutul Kahf, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions. Because the Al-Kahf is the surah of the postmodern world. It's a surah of the times to come. So what is the first thing Allah says? Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. All gratitude and absolute praise belongs to Allah who sent on his servant this book. Because this book is the, is the guidance, especially in the time of fitna. The Prophet said, Satakuna fitnatun. Soon there will be fitna. And Ali radiallahu an asked, Ma makhruju ya Rasulullah? What's the way out, Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet says, Kitabullah, the Book of Allah. And so the Book of Allah is the key. And the words of Allah are the key. And our relationship with the Quran, the first generation, the Sahaba, they didn't have any other sign. Their first, the first generation was the generation of Quran. You know, the Sahaba, they didn't have Aqidah classes or even Tajweed classes or uh, classes of Fiqh. The thing that everyone knew and everyone was learning from the Prophet was the Qur'an, Qur'an, Qur'an. So hammered this Qur'an onto you. And so this is the opportunity to, inshallah ta'ala, do that. And so please join the course and inshallah I will try to play my part of doing my best uh, to impart uh, and to make Arabic language easy and understandable and so on and so forth. Okay, inshallah, I pray that Allah opens doors for all of us in this regard, in the regards to learning the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. And so, uh, I think you'll like the courseware and inshallah ta'ala, see you.